Hey guys, Cody with Princess Craft RV. Come along with me today as we go through this Lance 2185 travel trailer on how to use everything. So let's start right up front here and show you how to get this thing hooked up to your tow vehicle. So it is equipped with an LCI Smart Jack, so it's electric up and down, which makes life really easy. It's gonna ride on a two and five sixteenths uh, tow ball. So once you get your tow vehicle backed under it, you will use your LCI Smart Jack to lower it down onto the ball. Once you get it all the way down, all you're going to do is take that coupler, pick up on it, and slide it forward. Make sure those two ears right there drop all the way down in. Now Lance does equip their trailers with a safety pin. It's just going to go through the hole on the latch there and then use that cotter pin there to make sure it doesn't fall out. Unhitching is just going to be the opposite. You're going to pick, pull that pin, pick up on the back, and slide your coupler backwards. And it should stay up and that will release the ball. Now a couple other things that do need to be hooked up to the receiver hitch are going to be your safety chains here. These are just going to clip to the receiver hitch off of the tow vehicle. They do need to cross to kind of create a basket underneath the uh, trailer. This is going to be your safety breakaway cable. This needs to run its own path. Do not run it through the chains and it needs to be hooked up with its own clip to the receiver hitch again. Um, and there is a little plastic box underneath here that this plugs into. Uh, don't route it through your chains again, put it on its own clip. They make some good replacements for these that keep them up off the ground. A lot of customers find that these end up dragging or getting snagged on something. Uh, they make some replacements that are kind of a curly cue uh, to keep them up off the ground and keep them clear of everything. Last thing that's gonna hook up to your tow vehicle is gonna be your seven way cord. This is gonna plug in at the seven way on the tow vehicle. And this is gonna control all of your running lights, turn signals, brake lights, and electric brakes on the trailer if your tow vehicle is equipped with a brake control. Now, like I said, this is equipped with an LCI Smart Jack. So this thing's got some pretty cool features. Um, obviously electric up and down. Does have a service light on it uh, that you just push the uh, light bulb here on and you can see it turns on a light down here around the ring. Now, a couple other things that it's got is um, automatic retract. Um, you do a couple of but button pushes and that's gonna automatically retract the jack all the way up. So once you get hitched up, that's a really nice feature. The other thing it's gonna have is called um, hitch memory height. So once you get right off of that ball, uh, you can do some button presses here and it'll retain that memory. So all you have to do is do the button presses again and it's gonna automatically return to that height which makes life really easy instead of, am I high enough, am I too low? It just kind of helps with the process. Uh, right behind that, we're gonna find our propane covered area here. Now keeping a coin handy is gonna be helpful for getting into this. Uh, so you can turn this little arrow slot right here. You just take a coin and put it right in there and then you can turn that. And that's gonna allow you to remove the top lid here which just gives you the basic access to your propane cylinders. So you can turn them on and off and also use the changeover valve, uh, which is this guy right here. Now the more in-depth process will actually be removing this to access the cylinders uh, to remove them for exchange or refill. So to do that, we're gonna undo the four buckles here on the cover, there's two on each side. And then we're gonna remove this cover completely from the trailer. Once that's off, now we can get a better picture of what's under here. So you do have three 20 pound cylinders. These can be exchanged or refilled, whatever works best for you or whatever may be available to you. So the two in the rear are already hooked up. The one in the front's gonna be your reserve cylinder. Uh, now this, to remove your reserve cylinder to put it into use, um, you're just gonna undo the band clamp here on it just by opening it up and letting it all the way loose like that. And then you can remove the cylinder out of that area and put it in where one of the other cylinders goes. So let me show you how to get one of these out. So once you get your uh, crossbar moved out of the way, your gas hose disconnect, all that, go ahead and spin the cylinder around and that's gonna help you clear the collar from the trailer there and then you can just tip it out and then remove it for the trailer. And then you can put your spare cylinder in service or take this one and get it refilled or exchanged. Again, remember these are 20 pound cylinders, pretty much the same thing that you find on all your barbecue pits out there. Anytime you're transporting it in your vehicle, make sure it's in the upright position. So putting them back in is just gonna be the opposite. 
put your bottom end first. Go ahead and spin it back around. And then we're gonna put our crossbar back on. Go ahead and reconnect your gas hose here. And then you can snug down the wing nut. Now this wing nut, wing nut does not need to be over tightened. So just snug, all we're trying to do is keep things in place. And that will be how you remove your cylinders. Now the last thing is gonna be the auto changeover regulator that comes with this trailer. Um, it can function in an auto changeover mode, which means both cylinders are gonna be open. And this thing's gonna automatically draw from whichever, you ha uh, whichever cylinder you have this pointed to first. Once that cylinder goes empty, it's gonna automatically start drawing from the other cylinder. Now we recommend running them in what we would call a manual mode where you, you manually turn the cylinders on and off and manually switch the regulator over between cylinders. So to do that, if this was originally our supply cylinder, it goes empty, we're gonna come out here, we're gonna shut this gas valve off. We're gonna open up the other cylinder, we're gonna take this lever right here and we are gonna turn it to where it points to the other cylinder. Now we know 100% sure that this cylinder has gone empty and we know we are at least one cylinder down on this trailer and we still have another one or we can take it and get it refilled. But that's gonna be the best way to use the propane, in my opinion, so you know how much you have. Putting your other cylinder back in is just gonna be the opposite of removing it. Just gonna drop it back in there. Uh, we're gonna reconnect the strap and snap it down. And then put your cover back on. A couple things about this cover. Make sure that you do have everything latched as it should be. When you put these back on, the edges of these do sit in these little aluminum tracks here. And that's at all four buckles, there's gonna be a track. Make sure you get it in there and make sure you get these latched down good. And with the top, do not forget to relatch it as well. Make sure that arrow is pointing forward and that this is on there good because that will blow away as well. All right, moving around to the off-door side of the trailer right here at the front, we've got a large compartment. This is actually where your battery is gonna be. Uh, you would find a group 24 battery in there to power everything. It's gonna be a lead acid battery. It's not gonna be maintenance free, which means you do have to maintain it. To do that, all you gotta do is, you're gonna pick up on this uh, little bracket right here. That's gonna allow you to slide your battery tray out. And these cables would be hooked up. Red's gonna be positive, black's gonna be negative. Um, if you need to check your water level, you're just gonna pop the caps off the battery and check the water level. If you, they do need to be topped off, use distilled water. And then to put this back in, you're just gonna push it back in just like that. If you can't remember uh, where these cables go, Lance does label them positive, negative in here, um, or just remember red is positive, black is negative, or take a picture. The compartment just below that is gonna be for our power, uh, power stabilizer jacks. Now, both sides use a central power switch, which means this switch has to be on to use the uh, stabilizing jacks for both sides of the trailer. So these two switches right here are gonna do front and rear on this side, and then there's another compartment with a front and rear switch for the other side. So to extend these, you're just gonna push the button. The stabilizing jack's gonna automatically run down here underneath. And all you're gonna do is run this to the ground. It's gonna put a little pressure on it and you can kind of hear when the motor starts to bind up, that's gonna be plenty. Uh, you'll do the same thing for the rear. Now remember, these are not for lifting or leveling the trailer. Uh, once you get it leveled with the axle side to side, you'll use the tongue jack front to rear and then you'll run these to the ground and stabilize the trailer in that manner. Now your big pass-through compartment here at the front, going to be equipped with a slam latch with a key lock and it is held open with a magnetic catch here. Now inside we will find a few things. Um, we are going to have a light switch over here which runs our accent lighting at the front of the trailer which can also be used for nighttime servicing up at the front. We're also going to have our battery disconnect switch in here. So the battery disconnect right here is turned to the on position right now. It is pointing to on. If it's off, it's gonna be up and down. The other key feature of it being disconnected is the key can be removed. So anytime you're using the trailer, make sure it's in the on position. 
If you're trying to charge the batteries, make sure it's in the on position. There's a couple of lights in here, one on each side that just have a uh, touch face. You just push in on them and they turn on. The other thing we're gonna find in here is gonna be your tire lug wrench that Lance equips with in the trailer so you can change out flats if you get one. Uh, just behind that, we will find some manufacturer stickers. You're gonna find your trailer vent on here. You're gonna find some weights. The little yellow and uh, red and white sticker there, you're gonna find tire sizes, tire pressures. Know those, check them regularly. Make sure you keep up with your tire pressure. It will help you get down the road easier, save you a little bit of fuel money, just like it does with your car, and hopefully prevent you from having any type of blowout or anything like that. A uh, little compartment right here underneath is gonna be an excellent place to store a sewer hose if you can fit one in there. Um, it is just a little exterior storage area that locks. It is not watertight, so just keep that in mind when you put stuff in there. So let's talk about your slide here just for a minute and a little bit of slide maintenance. You can see that this is equipped with a slide system that has tracks at the top and the bottom of the slide. These do need to be lubricated periodically um, using a good slide lube that has PTFE or Teflon in it. What you wanna do is make sure the tracks are clean and dry and go ahead and spray some of that lube on them and then run the slide all the way in, all the way out a couple times and that will help transfer that lube to the gears in the wall. Now there are also rubber wipe seals and bulb seals that go all the way around the slide and you do wanna make sure that you lubricate those using a seal conditioner. That's gonna help keep them pliable so the sun doesn't break them down um, and help them continue to do their job, which is to keep water out. So take care of that stuff and uh, your slide system should continue to do a good job at operating and keeping water out. So underneath your slide, this one's extended, so let's kind of crawl under here real quick. And you'll see this white handle right here. This is gonna be your fresh water tank dump valve. You can see that uh, white spout right there on the side of the black tank or tank cover as you will. Um, that's where all that water is gonna dump out of the fresh water tank. You pull that and all that water is gonna come dumping out of there pretty fast. Uh, side of the slide here do have a storage compartment. Now you can fit a lot in here. Just use your common sense on how much weight you can actually put in these. We don't want them overloaded. So try not to shove your entire kitchen in there. Um, and uh, so you don't over, overload your slide. This is gonna be held uh, closed with two thumb locks and a key lock, and it's held open with a magnetic lock. Now the slide is also equipped with a slide awning or a slide topper. Um, they're great, they help keep debris off the top of the slide, uh, but it is a good idea to get a ladder and get up there and check, probably when you do your slide lube, and make sure there is no sticks or anything that may have gotten in there and could be going back and forth with the slide causing damage to your slide seals. Let's talk about your uh, wheels and tires real quick. We did talk about tire pressure stick to the manufacturer sticker that we talked about at the front of the trailer. Uh, lug nuts do need to be checked periodically for torque. Uh, per lance, they want them checked at 20, uh, 10, 25, and 50 miles on the first trip. So that's when you leave here, so it is a good idea if you don't have a torque wrench to get one um, or purchase one when you get here. If you need one, we do highly recommend that the lug nuts get torqued as needed. Uh, it's also a good idea to do them after any type of service on the wheel bearings, had your tires replaced. Anytime before you hit the road, it's just a good idea. It does not take long to make sure you are safe. All right, this is gonna be our uh, Dometic furnace right here. This is gonna be the exhaust output for it. It's gonna get hot. So don't burn yourself when you're using it in the winter time, don't cover it. Uh, watch out for little fingers if you've got little kids running around. Uh, insects, flying insects, dirt daubers love to get into these and build nests. They make screens that go over them. It's a great add to save yourself some money in the long run. Exterior shower has hot and cold mixing. And all it does is pull out and then our flow control is done with this little lever on the back. You push it in, it's gonna lock, the water's gonna come on um, to release it, just push back in on it and the lever's gonna pop out. Now a couple things on an exterior shower. Make sure that you turn the knobs off when you are done using it. It can cause 
water mixing, which means you may only get lukewarm water instead of hot water when you're trying to get it. The other thing is, is for winterization, make sure that you don't forget to winterize this. It is exterior, can be a very high freeze point and cause a leak when you get ready to use it come springtime. Uh, to get it open and closed, it's just this little lever on the face, just uh, kind of spring loaded. You just push it down, it'll open up. To close it, just push it down, push it in, and it should lock shut. Uh, right next to that is going to be our exterior uh, cable jack. So inside here, we will have a cable jack and a satellite jack. They are labeled for you there. The cable one says park. Uh, so that's where the park cable would hook up. The other one says satellite. If you're using a portable satellite, that's where it would hook up. And I'll show you where the rest of the hookups are on the inside of the trailer if you're going to use that stuff. And that leads us to our 30 amp power cord. Let me show you how this works. This is very easy to get all set up. It's just got three slots on the cord end. One of them is going to be in L shape. On the side of the trailer, you're going to have three prongs. One of them is L shape. Just uh, match those up. Give it a little twist to the right to firstly lock the cord on. And then we're going to take that plastic lock ring and we're going to snug this down even more. Now you want to make sure you get a good snug connection here. If it's loose, you can get heat buildup and arcing, which can cause melting and overheating issues that could lead to power problems in your trailer. So take your time, get it hooked up correctly, and you should be good to go. Just behind that, we're going to find two water connections, one white, one black. Our white one will be for fresh water. This is where you're going to hook up to your city water with a water hose using a water pressure regulator, and it's going to provide water throughout the trailer. The black one is gonna be our black tank flush or our sewer flush as you may know it. Um, again, it's gonna hook up with a water hose. We do recommend a specified black gray water hose so you don't get it mixed with your fresh water. Don't use a fresh water hose to flush your black tank in case you do get any kind of backwashing out of here. You'll hook your hose up here, hook it up to the hose bib. Make sure your, dump, your black dump valve under here is open and then turn your water on and let it run for about five to 10 minutes and that's gonna give it a good rinse. So let's go ahead and talk about our dump station down here uh, while we're talking about this. We've got two valves, uh, two handles down here. Uh, liquid waste is gonna be our gray one, which is gonna be sink and shower water. Other one says body waste, which is gonna be a black handle, which is gonna be our toilet uh, water or our black water. In the middle, you'll find your connection. It's a bayonet fitting for your sewer hose. I'm just gonna pull the cap off twist your bayonet fitting on your sewer hose on there, run your sewer hose over to the dump and you'll be good to go. Now you can leave your gray open while you are camping for sink and shower water to just run out. Black valve must stay closed until the tank is ready to be dumped, which is either full or until you're ready to break camp. We do not want solid settling and fluids running out. It will create a pyramid plug and create problems for you down the road. So keep the black closed until you are absolutely ready to empty the tank. A couple of things that we have on the back of the 2185. This unit is equipped with the Voyager observation camera, uh, which is a great add-on to any unit. So you can see what's going on behind you while you're towing down the road or while you're backing into a spot. I've got a one-way uh, microphone into the cab with the receiver. So if somebody's back here giving directions, they can hear in the cab of the tow vehicle. I've also got a rear entry into the bunk area which is great, so somebody can climb in and out of here. It also gives you great access for storage if you move this cushion up and use the bottom for storage. Now this can be locked, uh, key locked and dead bolted. The red paddle is gonna be your dead bolt from the inside. And then it's just keys for the paddle and the dead bolt from the exterior. Now Lance has equipped this trailer with a four inch square bumper. The plugs on the end can be removed. This is another great storage area for a sewer hose. The only thing that I ever give caution to is just remember it is a metal square bumper, can have sharp edges in it, and can possibly uh, tear your sewer hose as you're putting it in or pulling it out. So just be careful and don't yank on it if you get a snag. They've also equipped it with a inch and a quarter receiver under there for hooking on a bike rack. Now they have put a uh, um, sticker here on their bumper about war voiding warranty. So um, addition of any non-factory items to the bumper can void warranty. So don't put anything on the bumper, only use that inch and a quarter hitch. It's a great spot to put maybe a bike rack um, or something like that. 
Now you do also have a roof access ladder on this trailer. This is here for you to get up there and do yourself a favor and check your roof seals. Um, you're gonna wanna get up there. Most manufacturers say about every 90 days, you need to get up there and do a roof inspection. Look for anything that may be a water leak issue. Um, and also look at the membrane, make sure it's not torn or anything like that. You can see here, this is where your license plate will mount up. It does have a light on it, so you'll be legal as you're going down the road. Now to get into your water heater, all you've got to do is twist this little D loop here. It's going to pop down into that slot and allow the door to open on your water heater. Now inside, there's not going to be a ton for you to do, but there are a couple things that you need to do for your maintenance. Um, over here on the bottom left, you will see a plastic plug or a Teflon plug. This little white plug right here. That needs to be pulled and so you can drain your water heater. If you're going to be putting your trailer away for storage or for the season or you're just not going to use it for a while, it is a good idea to drain it out. Water just sitting there can get pretty uh, stagnant and get some nasty smells to it. Um, it can also lead to debris in the water system that can cause plugging in your fixtures. So if you're going to put it up, pull that plug, drain it out. Uh, the burn chamber right here, this little tube right here, uh, we do see insects like to build nests in there and they can affect the operation on the gas side. It is a good idea to get in there and check that, make sure nothing's building a nest in there. At the top middle here, you'll see our pop-off valve. You never want to dry fire a water heater, which means you want to make sure it's got water in it before you turn it on to electric or gas. Good way to do that is to open that up and you should see water come out of it. If no water comes out of it, it's not full. Keep filling it up until it fills up completely. Last thing is there is a little two amp fuse right here on the control board that could blow for a number of purposes, little two amp fuse right there. Um, so if you're working with somebody over the phone and things aren't working, knowing where all your fuses are is a good idea. Now again, they do make an insect screen to cover this one as well to protect you from flying insects that may get in there and build nests. Door side of our trailer here, we do have two entry doors. They're both gonna operate the same way. Uh, the only difference will be our entry handles. This is one's just gonna be a regular uh, entry handle here with the uh, key lock on it. They're both gonna use the torque lift revolution step, which has some pretty cool features. Both gonna operate the same way. So let's go over just one here on how they operate. So to store them, we're just gonna scissor them in like that. And then we're gonna lift up on this handle and we're gonna push them all the way in and then push it back down and that latches them in place. And there is a safety pin here that's gonna pin in this hole. That's gonna keep them from uh, popping back out as you're traveling down the road. Now to deploy them, all you gotta do is pull this pin back out lift up on the lever again, pull these steps out, and then scissor them out. And that's pretty much that. Now they do have some adjustments for different heights. So if you get into some unlevel ground or something like that, these can go in one to there. So you can see that uh, closes up your step here. And then you can drop these feet down by drop pushing these buttons here and allow your feet to come down which they like to call an all-terrain landing gear. So it's adjustable and you can see that you can set for uneven grounds. So this is a pretty cool step. It's got a lot of features on it um, that allows you to adjust it to your liking and your stability. Let's talk about your uh, grab handles here. So these can store um, either forward or backward over the door or to the rear, whichever way works for you. You just lift them up and they are kind of spring loaded, so they just swing back and they kind of latch in right there. Again, they can store over the door if you like them to go that way. They just swing out and latch in for place there. So all the stuff here on the side of the trailer, we do have some exterior speakers. We've got a nice porch light. Our vent hood vent right here uh, does have to be open. So to get this thing to open, all you're gonna do is put your thumbs or fingers on these two little latches and just kind of push out towards the outside here and it's gonna pop open. If you're using the vent hood on the inside of the trailer, this needs to be open for it to do its job. Just don't forget to latch them back shut when you get ready to hit the road. This right here is gonna be for an exterior TV mount so you can bring a TV outside and sit out here under your awning and watch some TV. 
So your hookups for your TV are gonna be right here. We've got your 110 outlet, and then behind this little cover here that locks, you will find some other accessories in there that you can hook up to, a 12 volt uh, charge port, and some USB ports there as well. Dometic refrigerator here, uh, to get this cover off, we're just gonna turn these two little latches up here at the top. So the lock, lock position is having them run along with the trailer. Unlocked while having them point from the ground up to the top. Once you get them unlocked, we're just gonna grab from the top and pull out and it's gonna pop right off. Couple things for you in here, uh, 110 plug over here on the side. This is gonna be your control board behind this black cover right here. It's good to know where that is in case again, you are working remotely with anybody and they want you to try to check stuff if you're willing to do any diagnostics on the phone. And uh, this whole area back behind this cover is kind of your burn chamber area. We do recommend inspecting in there for nests or anything that may be causing issues with lighting on the gas side. And then last but not least is gonna be our little manual gas valve right here. That little knob right there uh, can be uh, useful if for some reason this thing gets stuck and continues to flow gas and you still need LP to the rest of the trailer, you can manually close it off right there. Now to put this back on, we're just gonna put these four tabs in at the bottom first, tip this up, and then we're gonna pop these in at the top. And don't forget to lock them or that cover will be gone when you get where you're going. All right, this last little door that's over here on the side is gonna be our freshwater tank fill. To fill this up, we're just gonna pop the cap off. We're gonna put our water hose in there and turn it on and fill it up. Now, if you wanna fill it up completely, you're gonna let it run until it back washes out at you. If you want to carry just a certain gallon percentage, you can watch the monitor panel on the inside of the trailer. Shut the water off when you get to the level that you're happy with. Now, right here underneath in front of the uh, axle on the door side, you'll see a red and blue uh, PEX line under there. Those are gonna be your low point drains. You'll just remove those gray caps from them and drain those out. Again, you'll wanna do that whenever you are setting it up for storage for a while, not gonna use it for a few weeks, winterization, anytime like that. You're gonna to wanna to drain the water out of those areas. Now on the other side of our big pass through storage up here at the front, uh, we do have a pull out uh, storage bin. So to get this to come out, you're just gonna undo the travel latch here and that's gonna allow this to slide out. Now, if you wanna completely remove this from the trailer, there is a little pin over here on the side. You just pull that up and that'll allow the wheels to continue to come on out and pull the whole thing out of the storage unit. Another thing that Lance has kind of hidden in here is gonna be a, an extra table. So this is a good outside table. It's just a card table, just stores right up here in this little uh, aluminum angle and it's a great storage space for it. Again, here on the side of the trailer is gonna be where your other battery is gonna be. Same information as the other side. And these are gonna be your other two stabilizer jack switches for this side of the trailer. Remember, these two will not operate until the power switch on the other side is turned on. It is equipped with a solar port on the side of the trailer for portable solar panels. Just in front of the forward door here, there is a, an exterior gas port. This is a great place to hook up an exterior cooking grill um, or a fire pit, something like that. To hook it up, you do need a quick connect that goes in here to a supply hose to your device. Uh, to get it hooked up, you just push back on this collar, your, hose, your uh, quick connect will push in and then lock in with that collar. Now to get gas to flow, you do have to turn the gas valve here and that will allow the gas to flow out. Now this does lock that collar so you can't uh, accidentally disconnect. Uh, to get it to disconnect, you do have to turn the gas valve off and then that will allow you to push that collar. All right guys, that should cover everything on the outside of our Lanch 2185. Let's go check out the inside. All right, so coming in the front entry door of the 2185, up to our left, we're gonna find a handful of switches. The top one over here is gonna be for our carefree awning. It's gonna have two switches, an on off switch on the left and our extend retract switch on the right. Now the on off switch does need to be in the on position in order for the awning to operate. So once it's in the on, if we wanna extend it, you're just gonna push it, it's a one touch, just push it to extend, it's gonna automatically extend all the way out. To retract it, you're just gonna go the other way and it will retract all the way in. Now the awning is also equipped with a wind sensor, so if the awning starts flapping too much in the wind, it will automatically retract. 
But for the, in order for that to work, the switch does need to still be in the on position. Um, <clears throat> just below that, we're gonna find our four light switches here. Um, we're gonna have our interior lights as the first two. We're gonna have our mood lighting, which is gonna be our light right over the slide over there. The next one's gonna be our courtesy light, which is gonna be the single light right here on the ceiling. Um, and then we're gonna have our awning light, which is gonna be this red backlit light. It's gonna be an LED strip that runs the length of the awning once it's extended. And our last exterior light is gonna be our patio switch. It's a three-way switch and the middle is off. Up is gonna be amber lighting and down will be a white or clear style light. The other switch that's up here is gonna be for our slide room in and out. So if you wanna extend or retract the slide, that's the switch you'll use. And you push it until the slide goes all the way out or all the way in. And being the type of slide that system that it is, we do recommend full movement either all the way out or all the way in every time you operate it to make sure everything stays in time. Anytime you're using the awning or the slide, make sure there are no obstructions that are gonna block its usage. Moving down just below our kitchen counter, we will find a 110 outlet just inside the door. Great place to plug in your coffee pot. And we also have a countertop extension here with a couple of hinges. Just lift up on the counter until these kind of fall in there. They should latch and this should stay on its own. To get them to release, again, pick up on the countertop, push in on the middle of the hinges, and this should fold right down. Below that, we will find our fire extinguisher with a little green button on top. Push that green button down, make sure it pops back up, and that should tell you that there is plenty of pressure in the, in the fire extinguisher if you need to use it. To the right of the door, we will have some key hooks over here. And um, let's talk about our windows and window coverings in this trailer. Most of the windows in here use a projector style shade. So you're gonna have two shades that can come down. One's gonna be kind of like a um, bug netting, if you will, or a light filtering cover. The next one's gonna be a little bit darker. It's gonna be uh, a privacy shade and light blocking. Uh, for darkening it out in here at nighttime or during the daytime, whatever works for you. To get these to retract, you're just gonna give them a quick tug and they are gonna go up. They are projector style. And uh, that will lead us how to open and close our windows. They are gonna be crank out style. First thing we're gonna do is pop this little paddle out right here. And then that's gonna allow us to go ahead and crank the window open. And then again, we can close it in the same manner. Now, if you wanna remove the screen, it's just these two little buttons right here. You just pull down on them and that screen will pop right out. Now we've got wardrobe cabinets on both sides of the bed. We've got these uh, little reading lamps on both sides of the bed that have a push button on them. Underneath our wardrobe cabinets, we will find a 110 outlet on both sides. And then on the off door side, you will find a 12 volt charge port and a USB station over there. On the door side, we will find a light switch that controls our accent lighting for over the bed and underneath our wardrobe cabinets. Now this trailer is equipped with a Murphy bed um, and a jackknife couch. So the way that works is our couch lays down flat to make the rest of our bed base. So to do that, we're gonna pull up our armrests here. These do have to come off to jackknife the couch. And we're just gonna set these out of the way for the moment. Uh, they can store underneath the couch. There is quite a bit of storage under here. When you lift up on it, you'll see that there's quite a bit of storage under there, but this thing lays down really easy. Just pull and keep pulling all the way up until the back of the couch starts to go down. And then it's just gonna pretty much lay flat for you. And then you can flip your couch, or I'm sorry, you can flip your mattress over and have your full length bed. Now your shade for your big front window here is going to be a different style shade. It's going to be an accordion shade that pulls up. So this is going to be your uh, light filtering shade here, and this will be your darkening shade. Now these two clan clip together right here in the middle, so you can use them and kind of adjust the amount of light coming in. Uh, to get them to separate, you just push on the slide that kind of has a dimple on it and that'll allow them to separate and then you can use them individually again. Uh, we do have uh, storage drawers on both sides of the bed as well. Now to make this back up, we're just gonna flip our mattress back over. We're gonna pick up on the bottom of our couch and basically until it kind of stops and then we're just gonna grab the back of the couch back and kind of pull up towards you on it and it's just gonna real naturally fold back down into a couch. 
Now we can put our armrests back into place. These little metal tongues right here are gonna fit into grooves down inside on the side of the couch. These are gonna be the receivers on the side of the couch right here. So we're just gonna slide that right down in there on both sides. Um, over, knee, over the uh, couch here, we do have a, an electric vent fan. Uh, just cranks up, you're just gonna open up the lid on it. We're gonna have a off or three speed fan setting uh, knob as well as a temperature knob on it. And if you leave the fan running and close it down, it does have a lid switch that will automatically turn the fan off. These do not operate with the lid closed. Um, if you are having a power problem, one thing to check is gonna be the fuse that's underneath this little cover right here. Just a little glass fuse. The other thing to check will be the lid switch. We have seen those get stuck before. Now the bedroom also has a privacy curtain here. It's just held back to the wall with some with a Velcro strap. And this thing just pulls across the area here. I do recommend pulling from the top to get it to come across. Um, take it easy and slow. The little plastic guides there can get hung and cause things to uh, pop off for you. So just take it easy and you shouldn't have any problems. Um, on our column over here, uh, we do have our clock to get this thing off the wall. Just rotate it to the left or counterclockwise um, and you will find your AA battery in there that will need to be replaced when it goes dead. And to put it back on, we're going to turn it, put it back on the wall. We're going to turn it clockwise or to the right to get it to latch back to the wall. So let's talk about our AirXL thermostat, which is gonna control our roof air conditioner and our furnace. Uh, it's got three buttons on it. The big one down here is gonna be our mode select button. The other two are gonna be temperature select. That's all they're gonna do. So you can see here, we can cycle through modes, fan low, fan high, cool high, cool low, cool low auto, cool high auto. And then you can see here, we will use the up and down arrows to change our desired room temperature. If you push again, we're gonna find it goes to heat. Again, you'll use the up down arrows to set your temperature. Just below that, we're gonna have a 110 outlet. We do have some magazine racks here for you. And then we do have another little vent looking cover down here. This thing does pop off and behind it, you will find a control board. This is gonna be the control board for your slide. It's a good idea to know where that is. There are some override functions on that. If, if you do ever need to do that, it's good to know where it is. Now, just over our slide is gonna be our nine volt smoke alarm. Test it periodically. If the battery needs to be replaced, get yourself a new one and replace it. It is just a nine volt. Lance, uh, provides a uh, insulation shade for all of their roof vents and skylights. They just snap onto these snaps right here. That's part of their Four Seasons package. This skylight also comes with a light darkening accordion shade that can be closed on it. Uh, coming into our dinette area, we have storage drawers underneath on both sides. To get them to open up, you just push the little latch there and that's gonna allow you to slide these drawers open don't forget to latch them. That button does need to be pushed in order for them to be locked shut when you get ready to travel with the trailer. Now, as far as the lighting goes in here, it can be operated a couple of different ways. We do have a rheostat switch right back here that can be uh, for dimming control as well as on and off. We also have an on off button right here on the base of the fixture. And then we have this globe removed so we can show you how easy it is to replace a bulb in here. Uh, if you need to replace a bulb, you're just going to put your hand up in there, pull down on the bulb, and that's going to be it. And it just pushes back in for replacement. Very easy to use. Now, the only window that's different on here is going to be this one right here, which is your fire exit window. Uh, you just have to get this little uh, paddle handle out, and then the window will push out. Now, if you need to exit the window, you're going to yank the screen off, and this will push all the way out. That window will swing all the way open but you can prop it there and use it as a ventilation window as well. To close it, just pull the handle all the way back through, tip it back over and latch it back into place. Now your dinette makes into an alternative bed or lounging area as well. 
So let's go over how to do that. I like to get the side cushions out of the way. So I like to pull those up and out of the way. And then we're gonna put our tabletop down. So let's go ahead and get that done. You gonna make it? Okay, now that our cushions are out of the way, we're gonna take and kind of twist and pull up on our tabletop. And that's gonna remove our tabletop from the post. Occasionally the post may come up with the table. It's not a big deal. Then you'll just have to pull it out of the table. Um, set your table out of the way. Pull your post up. Now this can store underneath the table. It can store in a drawer, whatever works for you. Our tabletop is going to lay in here and it's going to lay right on top of these two pieces of wood. And then we're going to take our cushions and put them back into place. The big bottom ones are going to stay where they belong. Your little center filler cushion is going to come out and our two back cushions We'll fill in the middle. And that gives you kind of a cool lounging area or a bed, whatever you need to use it for. So putting everything back the other way is just the opposite. We're gonna pop all of our cushions out of the way. We're gonna pick our tabletop up, put it back on the post and put everything back where it belongs. Now, one thing cool that Lance has done with their cushions is these can actually be flipped around and used either way. So you can have your solid brown this way or you can flip it around and have some cream as well. So pretty cool. Kind of mix up your colors. All right, let's talk about your air conditioner. We got the Coleman mock up here on the roof. Um, Got a couple of different vents on here on the sides. It's just going to be these two little gray levers on the bottom. Uh, you do have some uh, rotation ones right here um, on the bottom as well that can be closed off or opened up to be moved around. And then we do have filters on both sides of this to get into them. We're just going to pop this uh, piece out. Inside you'll find a filter. Just pull that down out of there. Try not to damage it. Clean it with warm soapy water and put it back in once it's dry and you'll be good to go. Our entertainment area back here, we've got our Jensen 12 volt TV. This TV can swing out from the wall. There may be some connections uh, behind that you need to make. There's a little pull strap underneath here. If you fill around in there, you can find it and that will allow you to swing this TV out. So you can use it for viewing at different angles if you need to. Now, a couple things that you'll need to see back in here are gonna be back in that corner. Uh, you'll see up there at the top, a 110 outlet. Below that, we're going to find your 12 volt power port for the TV. Below that, we're going to find your booster plate, which is where you would uh, where your rooftop antenna is hooked up. And you can see there's a little button right there next to it with a green light. That's going to turn the antenna on and off. And uh, when the green light is on, you will be using the over there antenna. If you want to hook up to park cable, you're going to push that button and that will turn it off. Uh, just below that, we're going to find your HDMI cables. The cable as it hooked up is hooked up right now is to play DVDs from the Jensen head unit as well as audio back from the TV back through the overhead speakers. Now there are some other connections in this little space right under here. You can see we do have another 110 outlet and we do have another coax and HDMI port. The top coax port is going to be the input from your satellite system. So this cable right here would hook up to your satellite receiver and then it would be an HDMI cable from the receiver back to this port. And then we're gonna jump back up to the top and we're gonna run an HDMI cable from this port uh, on the top to the TV. And that's gonna be how we would hook up our satellite system in this unit. Um, there are other connections on the back of this TV, pretty much anything you would expect to see on a modern TV these days. 
When you get ready to travel, make sure this thing is pushed all the way in. Make sure it's latched. You shouldn't be able to pull it out. You don't want this thing swinging out behind the slide and then you're not seeing it and it getting smashed. Uh, there is a black grill kind of tucked back here behind the slide. That's going to be our fresh air return for the furnace. So don't cover that. Um, leave it exposed and keep it clean just as you would in your home. Our uh, Jensen radio here is going to be our DVD player, uh, CD player, Bluetooth. You can connect to it. Pretty much does everything that you would expect it to do in a um, entertainment system. Do have a storage cabinet here. Uh, this little display here is going to be for your Voyager observation camera that we talked about on the exterior of the unit. Just plugs into a cigarette port in your car, sucks your cups to your window, and it is a wireless feed. So very nice feature to have on a trailer. So let's talk about our King Jack antenna here. Um, as you can see, we do have some blue lights here and an attenuator knob. The whole goal here is to get more blue lights. The more blue lights, the better our signal. Now you can rotate this antenna by pushing in on this little uh, thumb lever right here on the side, which will then allow you to rotate that antenna to try to boost your signal. Now, if you find these blue lights here a nuisance at nighttime, there's an on off power switch. This actually doesn't turn the antenna off. It just turns those lights off. Uh, so you can turn those off at nighttime and help darken things out. Coming around to our refrigerator here, um, when you open this up, it's a very uh, pretty natural grab. You're just going to use your thumb to push in on the latch there on the side. Freezer is going to be up top. Refrigerator is down below. Now all your controls are accessible with the freezer open. And you can see we do have three buttons in here for controls. Our on off right here, we're just gonna push it. Everything's gonna turn on, all our lights are gonna come on. And we will default to, this one says LP right now. So that was probably the last selected mode. If you want to cycle through modes, you're just gonna push the mode button until you find the mode that you want, which is either auto or LP on this refrigerator. And then our temp set button will be our temperature setting. You have one through three, so left or right, all the way to the right is going to be the coldest. All the way to the left will be the warmest setting. Now, as far as the modes go between auto and LP, if it's in auto mode, it's going to automatically select the most reliable power source between 110 electric or LP gas. Now, in order for LP gas to work, you do have to have your propane on and open, and you do have to have good 12 volt battery power in order for it to work. So a good instance for it, you leave it in auto mode, you're at the campground, you're away, the power goes out, and this thing will automatically switch over to LP gas. When the power comes back on, it will automatically switch back to 110 power. So we do recommend that being your um, primary method for turning this thing on and off. And just leave it in auto mode and kind of let it, let it do its thing. So just around the edge from our refrigerator here, we do have our convenience center from Lance. Um, and we are gonna have three switches and a handful of buttons over here. Um, all of our buttons um, are gonna be for our monitor panel or our tank and battery levels. Uh, so as you can see right now, our battery shows completely full over here. Fresh water tanks completely full. Gray is, em I'm sorry, black is empty and gray is empty. So that light is on. Um, and then we have three switches. The top one's gonna be our water pump. So if you're gonna be dry camping or uh, traveling down the road and you want to pull over and use the restroom in the trailer while traveling, just flip that switch on. You can see the light comes on right there. As long as you have water in the fresh water tank, it's gonna suck the water out of that tank, pressurize the system, and you will have water. Uh, the other two switches are both gonna be for water heater usage. Top ones here are gonna be for the gas side. So you can flip that on, that gas light's gonna come on. Everything's gonna kinda do its own thing. If for some reason there is a problem, that DSI fault light right there will come on. If you're gonna be plugged into shore power and on 110 power, we do recommend running it on the electric mode, or you can run in both modes for faster recovery if you have a lot of people taking showers. And then we've got two uh, switches just below that for our galley and our sink lights. Um, we've got our soffit light, which will be these two up here, and then our sink light is over there. Um, high point, uh, hot plate style microwave, uh, no turntable in here. So pretty cool new thing that they're starting to do these days. Um, vent hood with a light and a fan on it remember if you're going to use the vent uh, vent fan on here make sure your flap is open on the exterior of the trailer 
Now for our three burner cooktop to open this up, you're just gonna take the top, uh, first piece of glass, you're gonna fold it over the back section and then tip the rest of it up and it's gonna sit all the way against the backsplash and just stay there. To get uh, your burners lit, all you have to do is select which burner you want with one of these three knobs, turn it over to the flame and then use your striker to light it up. And then set your temperature, do your cooking and you'll be good to go. Now, being that this is a glass cover, we do recommend that you let your burners cool off before you close it down. Uh, to close it, you're just gonna gently tip it back forward, grab the other piece and fold it over. Now to light your oven, it's gonna be a little different. Uh, we're gonna take this and we're gonna turn it to the pilot position. We're gonna push and hold that button in, but then you're gonna need a stick lighter, right? Does this one need a stick lighter? Yep. Then you're gonna need a stick lighter and you're gonna hold your light to that little burner right there until it lights. Continue to hold that button in for about another five to 10 seconds until your flame is established. Set your temperature, do your bacon, and then turn it off when you're done. So just below our oven, we are gonna find our WFCO power distribution panel. Inside you'll find our 110 breakers and 12 volt fuses. They are labeled as to what they go to and a good place to start if you're having some power issues. One cool thing about the WFCO converters is, or the distribution panels is, is that if a fuse blows, little LED light here will turn on to tell you which one is blown. This is gonna be our LPCO alarm. Again, it does have a test button on it and it does have some uh, other information on it. It's a good idea to read it and know what it says. Now moving over to our galley here overhead, we do have a storage compartment overhead that has a switch on it for the light inside. So when you open it up, it automatically comes on. And then at the top, add we, bleh, bleh, bleh. up at the top, you will find your 110 outlet for your microwave. It is a dedicated outlet only for your microwave. Do have a little spice rack here and then this blind over here being that it's in a wet or cooking area is going to be mini blind style um, for opening and closing with the wand to uh, close it off and then we do also have the little travel locks down here at the bottom so if you want to travel with it in the down position make sure you get it locked in down there so it doesn't get all bent up now as far as your kitchen sink goes you can remove your sink covers here or keep them in place if you need the countertop space uh, this does have um, uh, two different spray styles. So you do have shower spray and steady stream here, as well as this does pull down for use if you need it. Uh, as far as flow control, it's gonna be moving the stem away from the neck of the faucet towards the uh, cooktop and back in temperature control, cold will be towards you, hot will be towards the window, and you also have a strainer in here if you need to plug the sink up for holding water. Below that, we will find our GFCI outlet with a green light. If the green light on is on, everything is good to go. If it trips and you have no lights on, find out, uh, reset it, see if it re-trips. If it doesn't, you should be good to go. Chances are something was just plugged in that tripped it. Underneath, we will have some storage with some uh, drawers over here on the side. And way down at the bottom, we are gonna find our water pump. Now water pump here uh, does have a couple things on it to point out. You can see right back there, that black turn valve, this guy right here. And that runs to this clear hose that comes out right here. Now this is for winterization. If you turn that valve to where it points towards the clear hose, the water pump suction will come through this hose instead of from the fresh water tank. This would just go down into your gallon of RV antifreeze and suck the antifreeze straight through this line and then to all of your fixtures. Now there are a couple other steps to winterization such as draining everything off and bypassing the water heater. So let's move on back here and we will cover that as we get there. Um, moving right here is gonna be kind of our vanity area. Over here we've got our uh, vanity for washing again flow control is just going to be the stem up and down to the left would be hot to the right will be cold we do have our light switch here for our vanity light we've got a 110 outlet inside of our medicine cabinet and then you can hang a spare tv back here on this wall all of your tv connections up here at the top and there is a backer in this wall to mount a tv underneath our uh, vanity is just going to be some storage space we have another countertop extension over here on this side that operates just like the one in the kitchen. 
And this door right here actually creates some of your privacy to separate you from the main cabin. This little latch that's right here at the top of the door latches against the wall. So you just push that back and you can see there it's just going to latch and give it a little bit of a of a shut off for you. And then to get it to release, just give the door kind of a pull, steady pull, and it'll pop right off. Now your bunk area is here. Um, you've got three different bunks, one being down there on the floor. Uh, there are some shades and lights for each level. The lights back here on the wall just have a switch on them. So you do have one at each level, as well as a window on the top and the mid bunk that have shades. And the bottom is without a shade. Now in our back corner here, we do have another entry door. Uh, both of your doors do have shades on them that just pull down. These are the same style shades that are in the bunk windows. So this is how they operate. You pull them down and latch them in to get them to release. You just undo them. If you pull them straight down and let them go, they're going to whip back up on their own. We have another storage cabinet back in here, good size wardrobe. And then down here at the bottom, we're going to find another storage cam compartment as well as a uh, false panel there that has a pull hole in it. So with this, we can slide this panel up. And inside you can see we'll find the backside of our water heater, which is going to be our other winterization valve, which is this one right here. And as you can see, there is a tag on here as well. If you can't remember which way to turn it, to bypass the water heater right now it's allowing water to go in and out of the water heater if we turn this where this is facing this pipe right here that's going to allow it to bypass the water heater so that's how that works when you winterize you do want to bypass there's not a whole lot of point in putting six gallons of antifreeze right into your water heater now your top bunk um, is equipped to come with a ladder that stores in the bathroom so let me pop that out and i'll show you how it sets up So this has uh, some C-clips on it, if you will. You're just gonna take this and stand it almost straight out and, and get it onto the hooks on the bunk and then swing it down. And that's pretty much it for your ladder. And that's how you use it to get up and down out of the top bunk. Now, again, this does store on the wall. So let me show you how to put it back into here. We're getting close. So here we are inside the bathroom. There's going to be four clips on the wall, which are specifically for hanging your uh, bunk ladder, just like that. They just pop in and that's where it rides. Below that's going to be your toilet paper holder. We've got our vent fan in here. It just cranks up. It's going to be a little mini fan switch right here in the corner. Toilet's going to be a foot flush toilet. Uh, with your right foot over here. If you push the pedal about halfway down, it's going to put just water into the bowl. Uh, once you get a good amount of water in the bowl, you can go ahead and do what you need to do. Uh, once you're completely done, you're going to push all the way down and that's going to open up the ball valve and allow everything down into the black tank. Now you want to make sure you're using plenty of water with anything that's going down the toilet to control odors and digestion, as well as making sure you're using some kind of tape treatment to also control digestion and odor. Uh, paired with RV toilet tissue, you shouldn't have any issues. Uh, we do have a light switch here for the bathroom light. And then our shower door is on a slider here and it just slides over and it uses a magnetic catch to the wall that holds it shut. For temperature control, it's just gonna be a single knob. Uh, so you're just going to set it somewhere between hot and cold to find the temperature that you like. You can slide this up and down. You just push this button right here and then this can slide up and down. And your shower head is going to be flow control here so you can change your spray patterns as well as have different flow. Again, you can put your uh, Four Seasons shade in here and help control temperatures throughout the trailer. The last thing that I need to cover is going to be your other ceiling lights. Uh, they are all going to be manually turned on and off with the switch on the side. So this 2185 is equipped with GoPower Solar. So this does have some buttons and some things on it. Um, you can see here there's an AC button on there. So if this trailer were to be equipped with a GoPower uh, inverter, it could be turning on and off here. We do have a max boost button that kind of bypasses and allow your batteries to go into a higher charge status from the solar panels. And then we can do some other controlling and panel cycling through here 
to look at different things using the A and B buttons. There's quite a bit of information on these. It's a good idea to look it up. Um, it'll be in your owner's bag from Lance that talks about how everything works on it. It has some Bluetooth capabilities, so you can use their GoPower app to look at things as well. So um, thanks for coming along with me as we went through this Lance 2185. I believe I've covered everything, but if I miss something, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can text us, email us, call us. And again, this is Cody with Princess Craft RV.